So this week I'm on holidays with my beautiful little treasure and I thought I'd give you flashes of the best. <laughs> These fabulous collages from last year's 100 Days of Collage, I know you're going to love this. I went through the whole color spectrum, researching the colors, where they came from, what the pigments are made of. It's absolutely fascinating. Of course, I found out the best facts <laughs> and the most grotesque way that colors have been created. So have a look at these fabulous pages these techniques of collage I love so much. And you can find a playlist of last year's 100 days of collage if you wanna continue looking at the series because I'm telling you, it's a whole lot of fun. Look how pretty these flowers look. See, I can do pretty. <laughs> it's not always intense. It might be a lot of the time intense, but you know, occasionally I can bust a move and do pretty. I think one of my absolute favorite stories of the history of red is the cochineal. Of course, you may or may not know that cochineal is made of insects. Yes, it is. I was actually quite horrified when I first found this out. That cochineal that you will find in food colorant. Hello, I've played with it as a kid and threw it around in food to color all sorts of things is actually made by crushing these tiny little weeny insects, almost like the size of a bed bug because their blood is so excitingly red that people just had to have it and use it to dye their fabrics and all sorts of things. The insects were used to make carmine, which is called cochineal, and are native to Latin America where they live on the cacti. They eat the cacti. So they grow the cacti to get the insects that eat the cacti to turn the insects into cochineal to make the carmine. Ha! Ah, isn't that fantastic? That's just fantastic. It's mainly now farmed in Peru, where millions of tiny little insects are harvested every year to produce the coloring. All right, let's go with that, but I definitely want something more dramatic for the center. Just saying, I do. Now, red doesn't always have to come out with both guns blazing. It can be a little more subtle. Um, you know, you don't have to have it full saturation. You can do it a lot more um, toned down. Pretty much you can do it however you like, really. <laughs> Just because I like to scream and yell doesn't mean you have to. Now, this um, beautiful handmade roses paper takes the eye zincs so well. I mean, I did rather have fun spraying everything in sight. So I do have quite a few of these beautiful handmade roses in different colors. Let's have a look and see how glorious this red's gonna be. Yes! <laughs> of course it is. Now, which way do we want it? I like it like that or like that. Mm. I think, yeah, I'm thinking like that. We might get rid of, oops, don't tear it too much. Like that, okay, I'm liking that. Sitting on my beautiful landscape there at the bottom does look like it, don't you think? I think it needs a little shimmering gold across there. I really do think it's gonna have to happen. Now, I wanna put something under the circles like this, because I just think that'd be fun. So if I can possibly tear some of this paper and put it under there like that that'd be really cool i like this idea it seems to be i should tear it here i just love these beautiful bronze crosses they look fabulous i mean it's such a simple design but it's really really effective i know i keep using them but i've got all these beautiful prints that's what you're supposed to do <laughs> you're supposed to use all your beautiful prints and if you print 20 of them, then that's what you have to use. So I'm thinking there, and I'm thinking like that. What do you think? Yes. I, yeah, I think so. Now I'm really keen to go with this idea of 
spritzing down there and giving a little bit of a shimmer to it. That'd be pretty cool too. Okay, so this is the shimmer gold eye zinc. And it's, oh man, it's just really nearly empty. I don't know why that happens. I'm just thinking, this is what I did last night with the other page. You can, probably can't see it, but it has this beautiful gold shimmer that it leaves on the page. And it just looks amazing. Well, I think it looks amazing. So I'm thinking we're going with this with the bronze. Actually, like that looks good. With the four in there. Okay, let's do that then. I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. That looks nice. So what do you think? Are we done? Are we finished? Have we finished fiddling with it? I don't know. I'm loving these um, crosses. The color of that background with the bronze sitting on the red is just stunning. What about if I added some more? <laughs> I know, right? I know. What do you think? Yes or no? I love the way it's bringing that color down. What about if we added some of this um, scrap of beautiful black Ogora lace. I know, you can be jealous now. <laughs> I have some black Ogora lace. What about if I put that under here? What do you think? I'm feeling it. Oh, yes, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm just doing it. Try and stop me. I'm just doing it. So my beautiful pages have now dried and I'm so happy with them. Look how glorious these fabulous tones of the red are. Oh my gosh, how can you not love this color? <laughs> Yay, right, the pages are dry enough to keep going. Yay, and I definitely want to start with this beautiful, fabulous, metallic, bronzy color. That side or that side, not sure, and I'd like to put some of this mark making with it, which was really fun making. So I think I'll start on this side. We'll add some of that at the top and then we'll put some of that on it and then we'll see what else it might need. Now, what about this side? We could start really subdued. <laughs> you know, it's not going to stay that way. So this is a beautiful gel print. And it was the violet with the iridescent bronze fine with Payne's Grey and some unbleached titanium. So, you know, we could start with something this lovely and subdued and then let's go crazy. So, this, what about putting some of this with it? I know, don't freak out. I know your eyeballs are now vibrating, but how awesome would this be as a circle? Oh my gosh! Yes, I'm going to cut a circle out of this with my secret circle cutter, which <laughs> even last week I showed you what that was. So I'm going to cut a circle out of this and see how that might look on that. I think it's a good plan, Stan. And then we're going to have this at the top and the metallic there. And then we're going to decide if that needs something else because it just might, you know. So. Let's do that. Let me go and find my mum's favorite cereal bowl. Yes, it still is her favorite. <laughs> Let me just tiptoe into the kitchen and uh, I'll cut that out and then we'll see where we're at. Yay. Okay, the backgrounds are down. Now, are you ready for it? Are you ready? <laughs> so since we are working with this fabulous violet color, we have to have a look at the incredible history of the purple pigment. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely amazing where all of these traditions come from. So purple has signified power for a really long time and mostly because of the difficulty and extreme cost of producing the pigment. Purple became the color of opulence and excess, especially with rulers. Made from the fluid of the gland of a sea snail, the smashed shellfish was then fermented with urine, ew, for the ammonia, and allowed to ferment for 10 days 
for a period of time to create the dye. Each sea creature only produced a single drop of the fluid necessary for the process. So it took 250,000 sea snails to make an ounce of dye. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Yes. And could you imagine the stench of the rotting shellfish with the ammonia of the urine fermentation? I mean, what people went through to create the pigments to get the colors that we so now easily have available, it's incredible. The difficulty and the labor intensiveness of the process made the dye frightfully expensive. Tyrian purple cloth was so expensive, it was literally worth its weight in gold. Oh my gosh. And because of it being so expensive, it was associated with wealth and power. Yes, we know all about the purple of the rich, wealthy upper class. Cleopatra was adorned in the richly lavish and expensive material. And after Julius Caesar returned to Rome from visiting his queen, he declared that only the emperor could wear Tyrian purple. Oh my gosh. Can you just declare that in law? I mean, seriously? In Rome, the purple was strictly governed by who and who could not wear the colour and was only allowed for high-ranking and powerful people. In fact, by the 4th century, the emperor ruled that only people of imperial rank could wear the colour, and anyone else wearing it who was not high-ranking or noble could be beaten or face death. Could you imagine getting killed for wearing a purple gown? I mean, seriously! Anyway... Fashion, it's a crazy thing. In 1856, mauve was created and this synthetic purple then made the colour more available for ordinary people. So you and I can use the colour in abundance without pain of death. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> it just amazes me the history of where these pigments come from and the difficulty that some people have had in the past of being able, allowed to acquire the pigments and use them and afford them. It's just incredible. We have to stop for a minute and appreciate the incredible abundance of art supplies that we now get to use. Now, there are some pretty funny stories when it comes to yellow and Indian yellow. The stories go that traditionally the pigment was created from feeding cows mango leaves and then extracting their urine and turning it into the pigment for Indian yellow. I mean, seriously? Seriously? <laughs> if your urine is looking this orange, something's going on with those kidneys. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If the cows were peeing like this, they needed to drink more water. Now, I don't really know. I've read it in a few places and I don't really know if the story is true. But the stories go on to say that when the colourmen were sent the pigments, which were wrapped up in beautiful brown paper and string, they could tell before they unwrapped it what that pigment was going to be because of the stench <laughs> of the ammonia from the urine. I mean, could you imagine having the job of following around the cows with a bucket? to catch the urine to create into the pigment of Indian yellow. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if that, that would be worth it. But you know how these stories go. Of course, now we just get it in a beautiful tube and, you know, it's got no smell. <laughs> so that's fantastic. I love these stories of where the pigments come from. Especially original pigments, we don't have that problem now. There's no smell when you open your tube of Indian yellow. Yay for us. Thanks for joining me today. I really hope you were inspired and encouraged. I really hope you had a lot of fun because I know I did. <laughs> now, don't forget, if you want more info or discount codes, you'll find it all in the description under the video. And if you missed any episodes, I have a playlist for the 100 Days of Collage. It's fabulous. All the videos are there. So go on and have a look. I know you're going to love it.